In this video, I'm going to talk about contracts in HoneyBook. This is part of our larger How to Use HoneyBook course. So if you're just finding this video, start at the top of the playlist for all of the information about getting your HoneyBook set up. In the last video, we talked about smart files and contracts are part of smart files. They're kind of a block that you can use within a smart file, uh, but it's important enough to your business to have a really good contract that I wanted to touch on how to build those out individually. So of course we're up in tools and my templates. We spend a lot of time here in HoneyBook and we're gonna click create new contract. And then in here they have a few things already filled in, our company info and then this base contract. They also have a link to their template gallery, which is awesome. All of these templates are um, legally looked over by lawyers. I find them to be a slightly less customizable to my specific work that I want, but there are pieces in here that I use occasionally. So you like a non-disclosure agreement, um, a proof sign off, certain things like that. You could absolutely start with some of these, but if you are a creative entrepreneur, I like the contract shop as well as the creative law shop. I'll link both those below for you um, for contract templates that are a little bit more um, customizable and specific to your different industries. This cancellation agreement is a great one to use if you don't want to purchase a whole new template for that. Um, I love that they have some of these things in here that you can start with and use in specific situations where you might not need a cancellation agreement for every client, uh, but you have it here in case. So it's very similar to building out any of your other files. You are going to copy and paste or type in all of your contract information. I highly recommend copy and pasting because I assume you're not making up your contract on the fly. And then the signature field is automatic and this is for your team and then your client name. So you will be able to countersign this. And there's not a lot you can edit on uh, this particular part, but that's because it's legally binding and they're gonna collect the client's like information, location, IP address, and time when they sign it, which is really great. If you wanna add something like an initials field, you'll use a smart field. And then over here, the content type. So there's a lot where it will pull from the job. So if you wanna put in like the client's first name at the top, the date of the project, um, that's a great option. But then there are a few things that you can use, for instance, here we go, first client initials. And so that's gonna give you an initials field. We'll preview this. And you can see that they will want to initial and you can put whatever text before that that you want. So I often have them initial very specific clauses throughout the contract so that it's drawing extra attention to them. So this part is pretty simple. And then as we saw in the other video, you can then add pages. So after they sign the contract, you absolutely can add a great thank you page. Um, what's next? You could even add a questionnaire page where you start gathering the info for their project. Uh, so you can again use these as building blocks within the rest of your smart files. But I think a contract is just so helpful that I wanted to specifically draw this out. A really common way to do this is to basically have a template that is your proposal with all of your services they can select and then the contract and then the invoice. So I think that's a really common use of these in conjunction with the other uh, building blocks within the smart files option. And then of course you can add like onboarding questionnaires, additional things if you want to. So in the next section, I'm going to go over the scheduler because it's a little bit more unique in how you build it out. 